So this is the central chamber at the heart of Caramore, at the heart of Listahel, which is the central monument here. And there's a great sense of that being a, this being a sense, a place of focus, a focal monument. Many of the small monuments that surround it pointing in here. That's a very different monument to all the others uh, in Caramore. It's got this huge slab of limestone tilted at a, a gentle angle over towards the Ballygoli Mountains. You can see there's a saddle in the Ballygoli Mountains for which it points. And there are six orthostats, or six standing stones, in the chamber, creating a kind of rectangular in plan shape. Um, the people here that were placed inside the monument, we know more about them from recent work. Um, I think there's a minimum number now of eight individuals having been found here. Um, two of them, or I think at least one of them anyway, a small child. One of them is a male in his 50s and his bones were defleshed or at least there's signs of scarification on his skull. And then another of them, very little of this individual was remained except that a tooth from him removed in 1998 was brought to Sweden and then sequenced um, for the genome of this was sequenced um, last year in Uppsala, Sweden. And because of the work done at the Karakil project, where a huge amount of data was re re recovered from six individuals, the Trinity College team in Dublin uh, that worked on that, and then Dan Bradley's lab, Larry Cassidy, was able to compare the short enough sequence that was obtained from the tooth here with the very comprehensive sequences from Karakil and from other of the now hundreds of sites and um, uh, human remains that yielded um, genomic data. And the extraordinary story here is that this person, buried here about five and a half thousand years ago, is linked genetically, is, has, has familial detectable links to people in, f in three other sites uh, that are part of the Irish Passage Home tradition. Here we have at the centre, this centre, this terribly important, perhaps prestigious place, this individual buried. About three and a half, three and a, three, 350 years after this person, far away in Millen Bay, in Northern Ireland, in Carlingford Law, we see an, a, ma a male buried there who has less than a six degree uh, relationship to this person. And at the same time, roughly at the same time, about 350 years on from this, in Newgrange, another person is buried, a male again, in the right hand recess of the Newgrange monument, in, in the, in the, probably in a, in a basin stone. And that person, again, is related to this person here. And there's a further degree of relationship, as I mentioned, the Karakil project. So there, um, six individuals were sequenced to high coverage. Two of them were female and four were male. And of those uh, two females, one was a little girl, uh, a child. Um, and that little girl, uh, we, she has a name, I'm sure, when she's alive. But she, to us, she's Car CK530. And uh, she is related, again, to this person and there's a further set of complications because that this guy who's found in Newgrange relates back to another different person in Karaoke. So what we're beginning to see is this matrix of relationships across the Irish Passage Tomb tradition and the genetic profile of these people buried in Irish Passage Tombs is distinct and distinctive with respect to genetics. They sit apart from the general population of Ireland and Britain and other monument types. And they sit apart also in terms of stable isotopes. So their diet is different too. So are we looking at something resembling a dynasty or very special people being placed in these monuments? Monuments that are, are really not just about landscape, not just about culture and belief and history, but also about specific 